Let's get this out of the way right off the bat. Skyrim and Fallout 4 are both really, really good games. Even if they aren't your cup of tea, if you can't realize that, then you're foolish. That being said, I have about three times the amount of hours in Skyrim than I have in Fallout 4. And why is that? Personal taste definitely has something to do with it, and if you're the opposite of me in that regard, hey, more power to you. You can like what you like, and I won't hold it against you. But I do think that these two games handle certain things differently than the other, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. How these two games handle similar mechanics and immersion tactics differently. Now right off the bat in Skyrim, you find yourself in a predicament. You're in a carriage full of rebel prisoners being escorted by the Empire to your execution. Many people find this to be frustrating. They'd rather they had some control over how their character interacts with the world right from the get-go. I understand that to some degree, but there's a couple of reasons why I think getting to have your character have a backstory of your own choosing was off the table. First, your character cannot know any of the existing characters in Skyrim beforehand. That would completely break the immersion, because in a role-playing game, if you meet a character in-game that your character knows beforehand, but you as a player have never met, then that creates a break in the player's mind versus the character's mind. Suddenly, you know there's a backstory with these two characters that they know about that you aren't privy to, and so suddenly you know less than your character, effectively making them impossible to roleplay as. You could give the argument that you should be able to choose a backstory that doesn't involve Skyrim at all, and yeah, that could have been plausible, but honestly, what would have been the point? You can already imagine whatever backstory you want for your character, many more possibilities than any developer could possibly imagine to put into the game themselves. Immediately in the first gameplay section of Skyrim, you get to make a choice that helps define who you want your character to be. Do you escape with the Rebels, or with the Empire? From that moment onward, your story is your story. Sure, you have no choice but to be Dragonborn, but neither does your character, do they? They were born like that and have to deal with it, and so do you as a player. So right off the bat, Skyrim starts off strong from a role-playing perspective. And how does Fallout 4 start? Well, you know, you're a former soldier, you have a wife or a husband, you have a son, and you have a robot. That is unchangeable. Set in stone. There's no getting around it, it's how it has to be. So immediately, you have the problem of being completely unable to choose who you want your character to be. Sure, you get some options as far as how you act in the world, but your morality is basically set from the start. You have to go rescue your son, that is a main quest line in the game, meaning you can't even really ignore the backstory you're forced to have and do your own thing. You aren't getting to make your own character and have them truly be you here. You're handcuffed into being a character that the game has forced upon you. And hey, if that doesn't bother you, that's totally cool. Some people didn't go into the game wanting to make a character that is truly theirs, and that's fine. But there's a couple of other things that I want to talk about. Walk into any city in Skyrim and just start chatting up any NPC that isn't a guard. Notice anything? They all have names. Every single one of them has a name. They each have their own unique stories, motivations, heck, a lot of them even have their own quest lines. This adds to the feeling that these cities are living, breathing places. They feel like they're populated with people, not computers. You look over and see somebody, and you immediately think of whatever impression they've given you from previous encounters. Now do the same thing in Fallout 4. Walk into Diamond City and find a random citizen to talk to. They have a name? Probably not. Unless Citizen has become a very popular name in the post-apocalypse, and most of the people in the city are obvious computers walking around their predetermined path without a thought in the world. It just breaks the immersion. I'm not saying named NPCs in Skyrim don't have their own little path they must follow, but it's all about how it feels when you encounter them. Seeing a character in a game and seeing they have a name, that they're a person in this world, creates a very different feeling than walking up to someone and seeing Citizen. I would like to throw a bone Fallout 4's way here, though. One thing I feel like Fallout 4 has a massive advantage over Skyrim in is the followers. Skyrim had plenty of followers available, but many of them just felt, I don't know, robotic? Many of them just didn't really have a lot of personality. Sure, they had custom voice lines, but for the most part, they seemed like their sole purpose in life was to help you kill stuff. There are some exceptions there, obviously. Serana in particular is a follower in Skyrim with plenty of personality and her own motivations. But then you look at the followers in Fallout 4. You have Dogmeat, who gets around the only existing to help the player rule because he's man's best friend. But you've got people like Nick Valentine, who definitely has plenty of character and exists for his own purposes other than helping you. The same goes for Piper. She's with you because A, she respects you, and B, wherever you go, there's going to be a story that should be written. These aren't the only examples, but they are a couple of really strong characters that are very fun to be able to enjoy the game with, even though they really are just NPCs. Again, 
both of these games are great. I love them both. I just think that it's really interesting to look at them and see that, though they're both made by the same developers and fit inside a certain game type, they do have significant differences. As much as people want to make the argument, Fallout 4 isn't Skyrim with guns. They are different games, each with their own flavor and each with different strengths and weaknesses. And you know what? I cannot wait to see what Bethesda does next. Anyways, that's all I've got for this video. If you like this thing you just watched, maybe subscribe. If not, make sure you tell your friends that I suck. And as always, thanks for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.